Hello and welcome to Daily Sala Digital. You are watching the news print and let's look at the news that made the headlines today. India's BLS International Services Canada Corporate enhances its visa services with three new centers in Regina, Halifax and Mississauga, operational since January 1st. Responding to increased demand, these centers accept passport, visa, OCI card and attestation applications. High Commissioner Sanjay Kumar Verma indicates the potential for more centers based on demand stability. Following the restoration of e-visas for Canadian citizens on November 22, Services resumed in various categories on October 26 after a temporary suspension. The move aligns with the rising Indo-Canadian population growing from 1.8 million to approximately 2.4 million in the last five years. After the avatar of a 16-year-old girl was allegedly sexually attacked by strangers online, British police are investigating the case of gang rape that occurred in a virtual reality game. The teenager was allegedly raped by a group of men while playing an immersive game using a virtual reality headset. She experienced the emotional trauma of being raped in the real world even though she was not physically hurt. However, UK authorities are concerned that the current laws which define sexual assault as a physical act may make it difficult to prosecute. The Supreme Court has requested a response from the Lok Sabha Secretary General regarding Trinamool Congress MP Mahua Moitra's expulsion over alleged ethical misconduct. While agreeing to examine Moitra's plea in detail, the court noted potential jurisdiction and judicial review issues. The bench issued a notice and asked for a response within three weeks, scheduling the next hearing on in March. Moitra expelled on December 8 challenged the decision alleging arbitrariness and lack of defense opportunity. The court rejected the interim plea for her participation in House proceedings, emphasizing the complexity of the examination. Moitra's expulsion was based on sharing login credentials, raising questions of national security and accepting gifts linked to cash for query charges. Truck drivers who went on a strike against the new strict penalties outlined in the new criminal law, Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita, for hit and run cases are returning to work, with normalcy expected in a day or two, according to the All India Motor Transport Congress. AIMTC appealed to end the strike after the government assured consultations with the truckers' body before implementing harsh penalties. Representatives met Union Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla to discuss concerns about the new provisions. AI IMTC urged drivers to resume work, emphasizing their essential role in contributing to the country's economic growth. Asha, the Namibian cheetah, has given birth to three cubs at Kuno National Park in the Shivpur district of Madhya Pradesh, as announced by Union Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change Bhupendra Yadav on Wednesday. Yadav expressed his delight on the social media platform X, describing the event as a significant achievement for Project Cheetah, a vision initiated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi to revive ecological equilibrium. The likelihood of notifying Citizenship Amendment Act CAA rules before the 2024 Lok Sabha elections has sparked criticism. AMIM Chief Asaduddin Uvaisi deems it a grave injustice, especially to Muslims, while CPIM leader Sitaram Yachuri accuses the center of using CAA rules for electoral gains through communal polarization. The CAA facilitates Indian citizenship for non-Muslims from specific countries. Despite protests and claims of an anti-constitutional basis, the government plans to implement the rules. Samajwadi Party suggests the BJP diverts attention from unfulfilled promises. The situation intensifies political discourse ahead of the elections. In a tragic incident in Karnataka's Chikmagluru district, the bodies of a 14-year-old girl and a 38-year-old private school bus driver were discovered near a railway track, indicating a possible case of suicide. The police have registered a case against the private school for allegedly neglecting action against the driver despite the girl's family reporting harassment. The victim's father had previously filed a complaint with the school management but no substantial measures were taken. A case has been filed under IPC sections and relevant POXO Act sections. The investigation is ongoing and the bodies have been handed over to the families after autopsy. 
In a heartbreaking incident, a 29-year-old software engineer, Sarang Kulkarni, jumped from the 21st floor of a Sarjapur Road apartment. Sarang, upset over undisclosed issues and unemployed for two months, lived alone in the flat. Despite an ambulance's prompt arrival, he succumbed to the fall. Authorities found no suicide note or messages. The apartment held signs of stress with cigarette butts and empty beer cans. Sarang's tragic demise highlights the importance of mental health support. Helplines such as Telemanas at 14416 or 18008914416 and Sahai Helpline at 08025497777 are available for those struggling with suicidal thoughts. Adani Group stock soared up to 12% after the Supreme Court dismissed key demands in petitions seeking an investigation into fraud allegations against Adani Group companies. The court ruled in favor of the ongoing SEBI investigation, stating no valid grounds to revoke SEBI's amendments. The government and SEBI are directed to examine Hindenburg's short-selling report for potential legal violations. Adani Group's overall market capitalization rose over Rs 15 lakh crore, marking a positive turn for the conglomerate. The ad hoc committee overseeing wrestling affairs in India announced the scheduling of under-15 and under-20 national championships within six weeks. This decision came shortly after junior wrestlers staged a protest at Jantar Mantar demanding the dissolution of the committee formed by the Indian Olympic Association. The panel acknowledged the concerns of the young wrestlers who have been adversely affected by the year-long protests led by top Indian wrestlers such as Bajrang Punia, Sakshi Malik and Vinesh Bhogat against Against former Wrestling Federation of India Chief Bridge Bhushan Sharan Singh. Since January 2023, neither the national camps nor the junior nationals had taken place, resulting in hundreds of junior wrestlers losing an entire year. Bhupender Singh Bajwa, the chairman of the three member panel, reassured the junior wrestlers that he would promptly organized the sub-junior and junior nationals in Gwalior. This ad hoc panel was formed on December 27 after the ministry suspended the newly elected body led by Sanjay Singh. Stay informed with Daily Sala Digital. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe for the latest updates.